Hi there and welcome to another video. In this video we, we will be looking at the um, Intel D945 GCLF2 motherboard. This is a mini ITX board. Um, power consumption is around about 6 watts of power so it's ideal for use if you want to leave your system on all the time for things like running web servers or you're downloading torrents. Um, I've actually built this little system here the motherboard isn't exactly a new board, it's about two years old, um, but the advantage being in that it, it was actually used by Steve Jones, who actually built the iMica system. Um, for those that don't know what the iMica is about, it runs ROS, which is Amiga Replacement Operating System. Um, this is a back port of um, Amiga OS 3.1 which runs on Intel hardware um, and Steve basically um, had various sponsors to actually design the graphics drivers to actually run on this system which was the 945 chipset. Unfortunately I don't have iOS running on here at the moment but um, I've actually built this for HTPC but at some stage I will get around to running iOS um, as I say, it's built into a mini ITX board. Uh, what, it's a mini ITX board, but um, it's an ITX case as well, so it's nice and small. Um, there we go. A few things I've added to this system. First of which is a wireless keyboard. This is the Keysonic 540F. Um, it basically runs wirelessly. You just turn it on and press the pairing button at the back and that pairs it and you've got a little radio transmitter over there so I can just basically sit on the sofa and type away to my heart's content. Um, as well as that being wireless I wanted a way of adding PlayStation pads onto the system. Um, for this you can generally have a look on eBay which you will find some PlayStation um, converters for joy pads and here's one here I don't know if you can see this it's quite dark in this room this little blue thing here this allows you to plug in a PlayStation pad now these little things with flashing lights on these actually came with my PlayStation joy pads which are over here these are wireless they run off AAA batteries. I think they take about three batteries in total. There you go. And obviously to save the cost of batteries, I've used um, nickel metal hydride rechargeables. I say it's a case of just turning these on. There's a little power button on the back. I'll just turn these on. That's on. And if you noticed, um, those little red and green lights, the one on the left has stopped flashing, which means it's now synced. So that can be now be used with the PC over there. And as I say, it's just a normal PlayStation pad. All you need to run this is this little blue thing here in the middle. That thing there. And that basically conver um, converts a PlayStation pad to be used on a PC. And these wireless PlayStation pads do come with those wireless adapters that are plugged in with the green, green and red lights. Um, obviously you wouldn't have to use wireless if you don't want to, you can just plug in a straight um, PlayStation 1 or 2 pad in there into the little blue adapter debris and that will be picked up. Um, obviously there's my case. I've used the thermal tape case because I actually like the design. Um, it's got enough space in there for two hard drives at the moment I've got a Samsung SpinPoint 2TB drive in there um, which is installed to Windows XP uh, also watch all my movies on here which is fantastic having such a large drive obviously the case does have a flip down here obviously in here I've got my webcam on the right is a little wireless, I'll just pull this out Hang on. I've got a little wireless receiver there. That's for use with a wireless remote control, which is here. So you can basically sit on your sofa, 
watching movies to your heart's content. That little um, receiver and remote control cost me about five, yeah, yeah, it's about five quid, I think, from Hong Kong. And it works wonderfully. You've also got a little button there for you for controlling your mouse. Left and um, right mouse buttons on there. Even, even power down the PC. Access the email. Launch your web browser. Close windows down. There's media buttons here for um, controlling your media player, in which case I normally use Media Player Classic for watching all my videos on. Have a look up here. It's my screensaver there. This is the Boink screensaver, which basically analyzes um, signs of extraterrestrial life, believe it or not. It's um, analyzing telescope data from uh, the Berkeley University. Um, and what it does is it beams all this information back to their, to their university. So um, in case you ever wondered if there's extraterrestrials, then uh, yeah, that's what you want to run. It puts your idle computing time to good use. Right, there we have Windows XP. Good old class, isn't it? Classy. Right, first thing I will show you is game base. Right, I'm going to show you some emulation front ends here. Game base, we have Amiga Demo Base, Game Base Amiga, Game Base ZX, and Game Base 64. Let's give you a little preview of Game Base Amiga. There's the splash screen. Right. Some of you might have seen my previous video of my arcade machine, and uh, it basically ran the Game Base front end. Obviously, on here I've got Game Base again, which is running on my little HTPC down here. Um, there's so many f games on here that you could spend all day going through them. It's a bit like MAME, multiple arcade machine emulator. Let's have a look at Turrican 2. Put the audio on. That's the audio on. Right. Sorry about that. I'd normally use my um, CD player down there, which has got a tuner on it for the radio. I basically run it through that as an amplifier. Right. Let's double click that. Actually, what I'm going to do before I continue, I'm going to quit out of WinUAE a minute and run the WHD load release of this because it just saves fiddling with disks. Um, extras, WHD load. Right. Start. Hey, it's loading. There we go. You've probably seen WHD load running in my previous videos. Love the music for this as well. I think it's by Chris Hillsbeck. I'm um, using a TFMX sound system which gave uh, multiple channels on the Amiga. Right, let's grab my joypad. pad.
Oh, it's got all the wonderful music on here as well. To flick through. All your faves tunes. Right, is my joypad going to work? We'll have the batteries died on me. Start. No, I think the batteries have died. Sorry about this, folks. Not a very professional video, but, um... Yes. They seem to be on. The problem with rechargeable batteries, you see, they never, ever last that long if you don't use the bloody things. Oh, well, never mind. As you can see, it probably works anyway. <laughs> Just can't play any games. Oh well. Let's come out of that. Anyway, that was game base. Obviously the the D nine four five GCLF two motherboard which I'm running in my ITX mini ITX case down here. Quite happily plays high definition video very well. Uh, we got some classics on here. Let's have a look what we got. Mm. Right, my videos. Uh, TV series, that sounds good, doesn't it? And... Stay on this channel. This is an emergency. As you can see, it all plays all my videos quite well. Um, this is via Media Player Classic. Good old classic Terror Hawks 80 series. It makes me feel quite old watching this. I always used to like the uh, the um, Sergeant Major in this. I don't know if you ever used to watch Dad's Army, but the Sergeant used to do the voice for it. I won't play on this because it's quite long. Right. So, overall, quite a nice motherboard. There's the D945 GCLF2. Um, I couldn't really fault it. The only things what, what, which kind of bothered me a little was there was no PCI Express slot. And it, although that's not a problem for most things, you know, if you if you want to play demanding games, you really do need a PCI Express graphics card and a slot to actually support it. Whereas this board only has a standard PCI slot for an older PCI graphics card. Um, the North Bridge, the fan on that, as you can see on here, Intel chose a quite a poor choice of fan. Um, you can basically fit a Skype mini case um, fan on there to quieten the noise down. There's two models, one with super video output, one and one which hasn't got um, that feature. Um, the board now is, I don't know if it's about two years old, but you know there are other alternatives out there. But as I say, I built this for running Amiga Aros, and for that one use is fine. I've only booted off the live CD at the moment. I haven't got around to installing that. But thanks to Steve Jones for the um, graphics drivers. And I hope, hope to have a look at that soon. Okay. Thanks again for watching my video and um, see you soon.